Hi everyone, Dr. Emmy from Pain-Free Infinite Posture Size. Today we've got a great new exercise for spondylolisthesis of the lower back known as the Standing Cable Pullover. Hope you enjoy. So a lot of you that have been following our spondylolisthesis exercises here on the channel have learned that we have a couple of themes that we follow to try to strengthen to prevent spondylolisthesis pain. One of those themes is we try to avoid extension in the lower back or an overarch in the lower back. And we do that by using our abdominal muscles and specifically using our abdominal muscles to enhance our RPI or reverse posture isometric. If you just tuck your tailbone under and crunch down using your abdominal muscles, you may be strengthening a dysfunctional pattern if you don't know what your RPI is. If you have oblique muscles working stronger on one side or a QL muscle or hip flexor muscles on one side, it may create a slight side lean or twist in either your pelvis or your ribs that torques your spine and aggravates spondylolisthesis pain. So if you haven't yet done so, go to the posture size of painfreeandfit.com websites, take our free body analysis, learn what your unique posture and mechanical issues are, learn what your unique RPI or set position is to do any of these spondylolisthesis exercises so you don't do them just in a generic way, the way I'm showing here, but doing it in a custom tailored way for your body. That's the best way to prevent spondylolisthesis pain because you're going to be correcting your unique mechanics that are adding to the stresses on your facet joints, on your disc fibers, on your soft tissues in your back. So that being said, what we're going to do today is we're going to use an exercise known as a standing pullover or standing pullover slash pull down. And what that exercise is, is we're going to be using a resistance band, but you can do this at the gym with a lat pull down machine or a triceps extension or press down machine. And we're going to be taking a stance so that our arms begin at about chest level. We engage our RPI or reverse posture isometric and we emphasize also, besides a little tail under or pubic bone up and crunch down with our ribs, we emphasize those lower fibers of the erector spinae muscles in the back. Now, we've talked about this on other videos also here on the channel. What I'm going to do is once I get that tail under to a neutral spine, I'm going to tense it back upwards as if I'm trying to arch my back. Now, realize I'm talking about tension here, not movement. I don't want to actually increase the arch in my back because that could aggravate my spondylolisthesis but I want to increase the tension of the tailbone as if it's going to arch the back. That increases the tension of the erector spinae, particularly the lower fibers around L4 and 5, and those fibers, remember, are oriented so they pull backwards on the vertebra, helping to check or prevent that forward slippage of the spondylolisthesis. So as I do that, I'm in a semi-squatted position. My elbows are slightly bent but not straight, and the exercise is to simply exhale and to pull down with those cables towards the bottom of my thighs. As I come up with the tension of the band, it wants me to arch my back. So here I've got to keep that abdominal tension on so I keep a neutral spine and my back doesn't change. As I press down towards the bottom, my natural tendency is to hunch forward and lose that normal arch or curve in my back. So the key here is as I'm pushing down, I'm maintaining that curve, resisting the tension, the tendency to lose it. And as the weight comes upwards or the resistance comes upwards, I want to resist extension or bending that back. And I'm maintaining that neutral spine throughout. This is stretching and strengthening my lat muscles, which are a key component to spondylolisthesis. Remember, your lats run from your shoulder down to your lower back. As the weight comes or the resistance comes up, it's helping to stretch my lat. If you wanted to get your stretch a little further, you could raise your arms even further with those resistance bands. Helps to stretch the lat. As I come down, it helps to strengthen the lat as I'm pulling. Use this for repetitions ranging from 8 to 10 repetitions all the way up to 30. As time goes on, you can increase the distance of using a band, increase the resistance on your muscular uh, stimulus for this exercise, or you can increase the pin weight if you're using a resistance machine. Keep in mind that with spondylolisthesis, you want to be emphasizing your RPI and that tail up tension as, long, as well as abdominal tension the whole way through the exercise, particularly towards the top and particularly towards the bottom. If you like this exercise and would like to learn more exercises for your low back spondylolisthesis, feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos out there. 
If you're looking for a customized exercise program for your spondylo that teaches you your full body analysis for your unique biomechanics and posture issues that are affecting your spondylo pain, as well as the stretches, tailored exercises to help you hold a neutral, stable spine, neutral spine, strengthening exercises, coordination, stretching exercises, balance exercises, go to the painfreeandfit.com website Check out our Fast Track Spondylolisthesis program. It's the best one out there for spondylolisthesis. If you'd like to help me share this valuable information with others, give me a thumbs up below. We'll spread the good word of these exercises with more people with spondylolisthesis to help them. I hope this exercise, the standing pullover pulldown, helps you with your spondylolisthesis pain.